Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So I wanted to do another Turner Syndrome video today. frequently asked questions about Turner Syndrome. So I have the Docker and Web FAQ series pulled up and I thought we could look at some of the frequently asked questions. So the first frequently asked question that the website addresses is what is Turner Syndrome? And it gives a very little nice succinct definition. It says Turner Syndrome is a condition that affects approximately one out of every 2,000 girls in the United States. It is caused by the complete or partial lack of one of the female sex chromosomes. This results in a range of complications, including stunted growth and development, an increased risk of heart and kidney problems, and infertility. The second frequently asked question is what are the signs and symptoms of Turner Syndrome? The ones it lists are the pretty normal ones. Um, I know Mayo Clinic has a really, really detailed one with all the possibilities. That one can be very scary. But this one actually is very straight to the point and most of these are pretty common. The first one is short stature. The average height is four foot eight without growth hormone. Undeveloped sex features mouth and jaw abnormalities, so a high roof or crowded teeth or a receding lower jaw. I haven't heard of that last one, but I know I had a very high roof in my mouth and because of how small my mouth was, I've always had crowded teeth. Broad chest, droopy eyes, low set ears, webbed neck, which is just loose skin around the neck. All four of those are going to vary greatly depending on how affected they are and how much fluid was actually in the back of the neck. The low hairline is the next one and that actually is one that I have. It's kind of just a weird hairline. It's never even really been that noticeable. Fingers and toenails that point slightly upward. I've never understood what that actually could look like, but that's one of them. Swollen hands and feet, usually present at birth really all of that comes down to fluid retention. The next one is what causes Turner syndrome. Because they have not found a definitive cause externally, they kind of just say Turner syndrome is caused by a defect of the second female sex chromosome. So they just say what it is. They don't actually say like, oh, being around chemicals or aged eggs or sperm or anything like that that actually like they found that makes that defect happen there has been no causation found um, nothing consistent enough to actually call it the cause and so that is how they addressed it the next FAQ is how is Turner syndrome diagnosed it talks about noticing the signs and symptoms noticing delayed development short stature and not growing at the right rate and then it goes into the actual test to definitively diagnose Turner syndrome which is a karyotype and it says a karyotype is a blood test that produces an image of your chromosomes and that allows the doctors to see if a chromosome is missing the next FAQ is what are the complications of Turner syndrome? <laughs> These are the most common ones. I I've heard recent others come out, but they're always finding new stuff. So the ones that they have listed are infertility, heart problems, kidney problems, hypothyroidism, ear and hearing problems, and celiac disease. And I have also heard of it causing eye problems, I think correct me if I'm wrong. They even give a little disclaimer at the bottom. Understand that just because you have Turner syndrome doesn't guarantee that you will develop one of these conditions. It just puts you at a higher risk of having these complications. For me, my medical family history gives that even more chance. 
the next FAQ is can I get pregnant if I have Turner syndrome and they talk about ovary development and um, women with Turner syndrome having trouble conceiving naturally because early ovarian insufficiency basically premature ovarian failure occurs where the ovaries don't produce the right estrogen level and so that doesn't help the development of those organs and that system working correctly which can lead to very very underdeveloped ovaries ovaries being just a streak of tissue or ovaries that are just not doing anything I actually don't know for sure what my ovaries look like, but I know they are not responding. The last and final FAQ is how is Turner syndrome treated? It starts, interestingly enough, with saying growth hormone. So it says Turner syndrome is first treated with human growth hormone. When a girl reaches puberty, she will then begin estrogen replacement therapy or hormone replacement therapy. I would correct that a little because it's not just replacing estrogen. I've been on progesterone also. So that was really interesting looking at the website, seeing what Endocrine Web said about it, which is interesting because they, I don't know if they specifically only look at Turner syndrome. I don't think so, but they look at endocrine systems and endocrine disorders, which is basically just hormones anything to do with hormones. So that's why the specialist I go and see and most Turner syndrome women and girls go and see is an endocrinologist. They specialize in endocrine medicine, everything to do with the hormones. That was really cool. I, I thought they had very pointed, good, typical questions like a girl that just finds out wondering if she can still have kids um, or wondering what her treatment's gonna look like, parents wondering what will be normal for their daughter once they find out that's what she has. And they gave some good information. Tell me what you guys think. That was the FAQs I found. I thought it was a pretty good resource. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you in some way. If it did, give it a thumbs up and share it with everybody. And if you are not already subscribed, click the screen and subscribe, and then you can see the next video comes out. And I will see you guys in that one. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.